morning class. Well, we have a, a session that we'll be looking at, Maths 095. And before we do anything, let us pray. Lord Jesus, your mighty back, we just want to thank you for everything. Oh God, open the understanding of the students who are listening and bless them as we pray. In Jesus' name, amen. So today we'll be looking at some of the areas that might be uh, causing any problems or might have been some challenges to you. We want to clear it up. So we'll look at it in details and try to un un um, create a better path for your understanding. So let us look at it. Our first thing that we want to do is to solve first degree equa equation. First degree equation. And it's very important that we look at an example which will set the parameter in which we must act. So if we are asked to solve three two x minus one equals 2x plus 6 minus 5x. So we are asked to solve this as a first degree problem. So what we need to do is to look at the solution. And the so solution is vital for it. So let us write the solution. Solution to the problem. Okay, so, and here we are just going to present it. 3, 2x minus 1 equals 2x plus 6 minus 5x. So, we know, based on the distributive law, so we work it out, 3 by 2, we get 6x, 3 by 1, 3, and let us put it back. So we have 2x plus 6 minus 5x. Now, clearly looking at, we can now put all the x's on one side and the numeral on the other side. Okay? Is that okay with you? So what we have, let us put it, 6x minus 2x plus 5x equals 6 plus 3, okay? So here we have 6 x minus 2x plus 5x. So what we are going to do then, we are going to group them. So 6x plus 5, that is 11 minus 2. So we have 9x equal 9. Correct? So 9x equal 9, we want to find what is the value of x. So we have to divide both sides by 9. So x equals 9 over 9. And here we could put it, divide both sides by 9. So your answer is 1. Okay? So that would have been the first example if we are going to solve by first degree. Now let us look at another equation because we are operating within the ambit of the units that you have based on your course outline. Your course outline stipulates that you will do units one, two, three, four, up to the eight units. So let us strengthen behind it. What if we were asked to solve equation dealing with fractions? 
And it's very important to note fractions, right? A typical example of a fraction. Half, quarter, right? And what would you call it that? Proper fraction. Half, quarter, three quarter. So you notice that the numerator is smaller than the denominator. That's for fractions. But you also have, what type of fraction do you have? You also have improper fraction, which means that the numerator is greater than the denominator. Typical example of a numerator. A numerator, for example, five, six. Five and six. So five would be the numerator and six would have been the denominator. Now, I could have changed this to be an improper fraction. So if I say it is six over five, here I'm having my numerator greater than the denominator. So that is an improper fraction. And also, you can have the mixed fraction, where you have the whole number and the fraction. Okay, so that would have cleared up any misunderstanding in regards to fraction. So I expect uh, you would have understood that, right? Okay, now let us look at solving equation involving fraction. So the next step we're going would be solving equation involving fraction. And here we have a situation. Let us look at the, 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 um, this one that we have. We have x over 2 minus x over 5 equals 7 over 10. What can you say about these? Obviously, 7 over 10 would have been a proper fraction. Okay, so we are asked to find the x. And the x would have been the variable. So having a question like this, what you need to do is to find the LCM. And we have looked at previous example of example uh, of uh, the LCM which is the lowest common multiple. So here we have 2, 5, and 10. Clearly looking at this, we would have seen that the LCM of this, when we speak about the LCM, we are talking about the LCM of the denominator. So the LCM of 2, 5, and 10 would have been 10. Okay? So, yes, green, the LCM would have been 10. Okay? So, what we need to do is to multiply by the LCM. Okay? So, we say it's LCM. So, we look 10 x over 2 minus 10 x over 5 equals what? 10 by 7 over 10. Clear. And why we do that? We are multiplying by the LCM. Multiplying by 
by MCM. Okay. Okay. So let us look at this side. So if we are multiplying by the LCM, we say 2 into 10, what we get? 5. Yes, that's 5. Right? And X. Yes. And then we have 5 into 10, 2. Two by x, and we have ten into ten, so we end up having what? Seven. Okay. So five minus two, they are the same, so it becomes three x equals seven. Therefore, x. We're going to divide to eliminate this 3. We divide both sides by 3. And it becomes 7 over 3. Okay? So that would have been the solution set. The solution set is... 7 over 3. Now one of the reasons why we spend time going over this for you because we want to make sure that nobody is confused and the material is totally understood. Okay? So let us look at decimal. By the way, do you know how to convert, and, and, and I'm just trying this for you to understand. Do you know to convert fraction to decimal? If you do not know, just look at this simple e e example. Just want you to, I just want you to reinforce. So if you have an half, and you want to convert it to a fraction, that's half, so what you do, Look at it. Two and one. Yes. So you say two. The divides are divided by the quotient and say two into one. I can't. You are not. Two into ten. That's five. Five twos, ten. That's showing you how you convert fraction to decimal. I thought it fit to incorporate it here so that you have a better understanding of what you are doing. Okay? Do I get it? Right, Abigail? You should have understood that. I know Alex, Alex, sir, you would also understand. And every member of the class would appreciate it. So we can convert what? Fraction? to decimal, and we can also convert decimal to fraction, and we can convert percentage to decimal as well. Okay, we can do all of those things. So let us look at the third aspect, solving equation. Solving equation which involve decimal. And there are two ways of doing your computation. First, you could have used it in straight decimal, or you could have multiplied by 100, or the power of the decimal, whatever the decimal is. So let us um, uh, add number three also what I would like to add to it having done all of these I want you to um, look at 
the central tendency that will do as well. Central tendency. Mean, mode, and median. So now let's look at the third aspect. Solve equation involving decimal. So, equation, let me write foot block so that you can see better. Equation involving uh, involving decimal. Remember what we did not too long ago? We were able to convert what? Fraction to decimal. Have you seen that? And also you can convert decimal to fraction or percentage to any of, the, of it, right? Oh, everybody understood? Or you want me to stay a little on the conversion? Let me just spend a little more time on the conversion. What if you were given, and let us say, let me spend a little time on the conversion. So we have a fraction. Uh, decimal uh, let me just and percentage right decimal and percentage so if you are given an half, we use a typical example. As a fraction, we say the decimal would be 0.5. And the percentage would have been, you move it to decimal places. So it would have been 50%. Or you can, that's one way of doing it. You could have done it that way, 50%. Or you could have done it this way. Or percentage is a hundred, right? Or fifty over hundred, right? Uh, it's fifty percent. Okay. If you are given a quarter, then we say, let me just inject it for you. Four and one because we are doing some conversion, four and one. So you would have four into one, I can't, I don't know, four into 10, that's two, two, four, is eight, that's two, there you carry another knot. Then you say four into 25. So this definitely is 0 0.25, and if you are going to convert to percentage, it becomes 25%. Okay, so we are okay with um, fraction decimal percentage. Okay, but let us go in the equation involving decimal. So here I've given you the structure what you should have applied it. So what we are doing first, we're going to use um, an example. So you are asked to solve. Zero point zero four X plus zero point zero Seven two x equal ninety. So you could have 
use any other methodology. Two ways. So here we're going to use the first method where we are using the, the power. So here we are using two decimal places. How do we know? Zero is to four, one, two. This carries one, two. So if it is two decimal places, it is 10 to the one, 10 to the two. 10 to the two is 100, meaning 10 multiplied by 10, okay? So it's 100, right? So we look at our solution, yes? So the solution is 100, why 100? Because we look at it and it is two decimal places. So it's 100 by 0.04 x plus, what else would we, what else would we have? Hmm? Or we could just put the 100 out, outside of the bracket. Let us put the 100 outside of the bracket and, uh, to make it better. Right? Let us uh, put the 100 outside of the bracket uh, to make everything easier. So it's 100 by the expression 0 0.07, yes, 2x. Right? By 100 by 90. And here you have 90 by 100. What you do? How many zeros you have? 1, 2, 3. Right? So it's 3, 0, and 1 by 9. So you have 9,000. 9,000. So 100 by 90 gives you 9,000. So let us work out this. So 100 by uh, 0 0.4, that is what, 4x? Yes. And 0 0.7 by 2. 0 0.7 by 2. And by 100, it gives us 14x equal 9,000. Yes? So 4x, we are adding then a 4x plus 14x gives us 18x equal 9,000. Having done that, is it complete? No, Abigail, it's not complete. Or green, not completed. So you need to find x. So what would we do? Certainly, we'll have to divide by both sides by 18. Right? So x equal 9,000 divided by 18. And our narrative would be Dividing both sides by dividing both sides by eighty, which equals when you divide that is five hundred. So our solution set is five hundred. So x equals 500. Okay? So here we look at um, so x, so your solution set would be x equal 500. Okay, let us look at the fourth aspect. The fourth aspect of it 
is we are going to look at worded problem. And I know everybody is going to enjoy when you look at worded problems. Because this is a way of introducing the algebraical expressions. Right? And here is a situation. What we must do? If we have a word problem, what should we do? How should we attack a, a worded problem? And that's the first question, the first question which is asked. And then we go on to the second, third, fourth, etc. So based on the notes given, we would do what? We can map, map it, sketch the diagram. Yes, we can uh, look at a reasonable variable, whether it is X or Y. And then we can form an equation having form looking at the variable, right? And the next step, we're going to solve the equation. And you must ensure that you check your answers. Clearly? Okay, so in this case here, and all we are saying why we have done it for you, because we want to remove any misunderstanding, should in case you get any problem, you now know how to deal with the problems. Bear in mind also that we will look at central tendency this afternoon. So here we are asked, and you have a problem. So what I will do, I will just identify it, right? So here we have a situation in which the length Uh, we are given the length of a rectangle. You say it is four feet. Less than twice the width. So here we have an equation coming up. Right? We say it is less than four feet, less than the width. So clearly looking at it, you know then that the variable has to be Double. So you can say let width be double. So what we have it will be, read again for me, four feet less than twice. So we do not know what the x is. So our equation is correct to form double four, and let us read it, two double minus four. Right? Let us continue. The perimeter of the rectangle is 34 feet. Find the length and the width. Remember, the formula for perimeter is twice times the length plus the width. Or perimeter meaning the measurement around. True? Yes. Because if you are going to find the area it will be length multiplied by the weight. I'm just talking to you. So here we have a rectangle. What if, and I'm throwing out to the class, you're asked to find the area of a square for a rectangle. We know that the rectangle it has two times two lengths and two widths. For the square, the square has equal sides. So the length and the width are the same. Okay? We will enforce, reinforce that point later. But let us deal with the question. So, this is question three. Perimeter, and that's the formula, equals two times the width plus Two times the length. Two times the width plus two times the length. This can also be written as two is common, right? Double plus L. Yes. That's a commonality. So let us proceed. So what we have then, we are given the parameter as 34. So let us write it 34. Do you, you see that? 
Then we have two doubler plus two. What is the length? We are given in the equation two doubler four. Let us read it uh, to, to be sure. Because I, I know you, you are going to ask, sir, where did you get that from? But let us read it again so that you can see it. The length of the rectangle, and that, that, this is given in the problem. The length of the rectangle is four feet less than twice the width. Four less than twice. So that's correct in writing the equation. So let us solve. So we have 34. So we have two double up. Let us apply the distributory law. Two by two, we get four double up. Two by four, we get eight. So let us apply. We can do this. We can do this. We can say 34 plus 8 equal 2 double plus 4 double. Yes. So let us apply the right hand side. Apply the right hand side. So we have 2 plus 4, it is 6 double equal 34 plus 8. 42. Therefore, doubler equals 42 over uh, 6, which equals 7. And what, what would that be? 7 feet. Yes? 7. So the width will be that. Is that true? So if the width is seven, if the width is seven, what would be the length? Okay, because we have identified double equal seven feet. Therefore, length, and we have the equation. Yes, the length we have. What is it? It is. 2 by 7 minus 4. You remember what we got here? It is 2 double, 2 double minus 4. Right? So what we now have is, and we can work it out. 2 by 7, 14 minus 4, and that is 10 feet. So we are able to apply that for uh, question three, okay, or uh, question four. So let us look at uh, question five. Because remember in our course outline, asks us to use word problems. Yes, that's what it asks us to, in unit three and unit four. And we have to verify that, and we have to make sure that is correct. So, uh, what I want to take your attention to for problem um, five is the question of cost. Okay, so let us walk into it. question five. Solving word problem with discount, question five. Solving word problems involving discount. So it, in, it involves, so we can write word problems with 
discount and selling price. So we are looking at work problems with discount and selling price. So how do we look at it? First of all, I want you to understand the concepts. So let us do a rational, um, as, um, rationalization of the problem. Okay, how do you identify selling price? Okay, so selling price equal cost price plus profit. So let us put it. So SP equal CP plus profit. Agree? So if we are given the selling price, we can, and the cost price, we can find a profit. Let us look a little further. Cost price equal selling price minus profit and profit equal selling price minus cost. So we can look at the problem and identify it, okay? Let me just spend a little time on this so that uh, we are not confused. Okay? So, if you are given any equation and you are asked to find the, the profit or the cost price, once you are given any of the two variables, you can find it. Let us uh, take the challenge. What if you are given the selling price of a thousand dollars and the cost price equals eight hundred dollars? Would you be able to find a profit? Yes, profit equal selling price minus cost price and therefore that become 1000 minus 800 yes so your profit would have been so your profit would have been 200 dollars yes yes you could have done that also what if and you, you could have found your profit as a percentage of sales. Yes? So, profit uh, and profit percent of selling price it has to be profit over selling price. And in this case here, remember before we tackle the discount, I want you to understand the concepts of these computation so that you are able to understand the discount. Okay? So in this case here, so your profit as a percentage of uh, selling price, it would have been 200 over 1,000, yes? And it's a percentage, right? By, by 100. And let us cancel. Zero to zero, zero. Yes, zero, zero. So two, ten, that's twenty. 
percent. Let me just reinforce another part. What if you were asked to find profit percent of cost? So it becomes profit is 200, cost is 800 by by 100 we cancel you say 2 into itself 1, 2 into 8, 4 4 into itself 4 into 10 2 5 Now, notice, 20% is one-fifth. This, at cost price, is quarter. So here is an interesting part. And expectedly, when you are doing fundamental of mathematics, we will distinguish to you the difference between margins and markup. So selling price, you refer to as a profit percentage as margin. And of cost, you refer to as cost price. So uh, I, I am just um, wanting to you, you to go through it and understand. Let me reinforce. The principle. Before we go to word problems with discount selling price, we want you to understand the concept of how you do you arrive at your selling price. So your selling price consists of your your cost price, what you or your cost price, what you buy it for. And the profit is a percentage that you are going to add to it. Okay? So selling price equals cost price plus profit. We say you can use the equation interchangeable. Because if you are given your, your selling price and you want to find your cost price, you can find it. And if you are given your profit, you can find, and if you sell price, you can also find it. What we actually have done is to look at the scenario. And the first scenario we have looked at, what if a man sells a bicycle for a thousand dollars, say US. Because you make a, you can sell a bicycle for a thousand. And the cost price for this bicycle is eight hundred dollars, and you are asked to find out what is the profit. So you could have found the profit by saying selling price minus cost price. So in this case here, we are taking it a, a bit further, because what you are given, you are asked to find the computation of profit. But also profit carries another connotation. It carries what if it is a percentage? Follow me very carefully. What if it is asked to find a profit as a percentage of sales or a percentage of cost? So the formula that one would have used would have been if it were for the selling price, it would be profit over selling price. And if it were cost, it would have been profit over cost price. Clear? Are we clear with it? And here we have done the computations and we are able to establish that the sale, and let me ask you then, since you are um, thinking about it. I know several students uh, would um, enjoy to hear it, but I'm just putting it into the group. 
could you distinguish what can you say about the profit on sale as opposed to profit and cost which is greater the profit yes you are answering me you are saying and I like the answer that you are saying to me green the profit is 20% it is less than what it would have been in terms of the uh, cost. Okay, so we have established a fundamental point. Okay, let me just reinforce another point. Let me reinforce a point, another point, because uh, you might am asked to say, so why teacher giving me the video I'm having the module? But this is an um, explanation, explanation for you. So that if there's any misunderstanding, we can clarify, okay? Now, a discount. When you speak about discount, it means that you sell it less than what it ought to have been. Yes? So you could have um, the selling price of 100, right? But you yeah, offer this a discount. Of 15 percent so that becomes 85 percent so that's the net okay so so the selling price the new selling price would have been no one 85 percent okay so let us look at the example that we have up front so here we are given a car repair shop as some brake pads that cost thirty dollar each, the owner wants to sell them at a profit of seventy percent. Notice of the cost. It says seventy percent of the cost. Yes, that's a profit. Question: What selling price will be charged to the customer? Oh, sir, this is very simple. Yes, it is simple. Because we have to understand the concept. The concept is that your selling price consists of your cost price plus your profit. In this case here, we could have um, written the, 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 the question. Let us put it up. So, we know that, and this is five. S selling price equal cost price plus profit. Okay? So we know that the selling price, yes, equal, and we are given a 30%, right? Yes? $30, that's what it was given. We were also told that it sell them at a cost of 10% of the uh, um, of cost. So in essence, there's a 10% down on it, right? So it's 60% of the, the $30. Because he sold it at a discount. So he wants his profit um, to be 10%. Now you notice it. 10% of cost. Right? Remember, and, and, I, and I want you to look at it again before we go and go over it. What have we learned when we were comparing profit percentage? of sales as opposed to profit percentage of cost. We learned that the profit percentage of sales green was less in the other example that we were given. We saw where it was 20%. While 
the profit as a percent of cost was 25%. Just recap. I know you might be very busy, but let us recap. We had agreed in the principle that the, the selling price was $1,000. The cost price was $800. So the profit was $200. So if you are asked the selling price, And if you are at the profit, in fact, as a percentage of sale, it has to be that profit 200 over the $1,000, which gives you the 20%. Follow me. Next, you are also asked if you were to compute the profit as a percentage of cost. And then you put the $200 over what? The $800, that's 25 so what we have seen in a situation here, and, and, and I want you to pay attention, it was 70% of cost. So the selling price has to be less. It can't be, it, it can't be 70, it has to be 60, 10%. Okay, so let us reason, because I, I'm just explaining it to you. So let us take it here. So, so we have $30, 60%. Remember, we have looked at how you convert percentage to decimal. So 60%, you move it two places to the left. So it's 60, so it becomes point 0.6. 0.6. By thirty dollars, which equals thirty, and that's what uh, eighteen, which equals forty eight dollars. Yes, we could have done it another way, or it could have been done this way. It could have been 30 by 1.6. Yes, 30 by 1.6. Uh, you have a calculator? 30 by 1.6, and that would have given you 48. Yes? 60% of 30, $18. Huh? So that's $48. Let us do another one. Okay, so we had looked at this. This is the same thing, you know, looking at the formula, we're changing the formula. Yes. So let us step on another one to look at how we evaluate. So the next one would be six. Evaluate. Evaluate. Formula. for given values. Okay, now I'm certain that some of you have been taught this, right? That uh, the simple interest equals your principal, your rate, and your time. Remember, principal by, by rate, by time, over 100, right? That's what they were saying, the interest. So what you can do then is saying interest equals 
principal array and time. Right? And in this case here, in this case, you are given the values. Let us say what was given. Principal was 1,200. What was the rate? I, and the simple interest was 360 dollars. I was 360 dollars. Right? And the time for years. So which all we need to do is to put it in a formula. So let us put it in. So 360 equal, we're substituting it for it. I 360P this P is 1200 and R was 4 years we never know we don't know what is R and rate was 4 ok so here we have the algebraical expression and it's very easy for us to uh, to, to, to follow having it like that so let us work on it so 360 where do we get it 360 from it was given in the problem it was given that I equals 360 dollars it was also given that the principal was 1200 and the rate we do not know but we know the time. The time was four years. So let us work. So we put it 360 here. The distributary or the distributive law states what is outside the bracket must multiply what is inside of the bracket. True. So 1200 by R gives us 1200 R plus 4. Yes. So, so we now have, what do we have? Sorry. It's multiplied by 4. So let me get it right. Now plus 4. Let us fix this. The distributable law, it says 1,000 by 4 equals 1. 1,204 equals this. Right, so it's 4,860. Okay? So what is R? Can anybody tell me what is R? So you would have to divide both sides. By what? Four, um, four thousand eight hundred. So let us apply the R right hand or the left hand side. In this case, you want to change it around. Okay. So four thousand eight hundred R equal three sixty. True. Yes. So we now have to divide both sides by 4,800. So R equal 360 over 4,800. And this equals, by the way, we say this is right hand side. Hmm? And here is a distributor. Uh, 
No. And when you work it out, it becomes the rate is 0 0.075 or 7.5 percent. Okay. So that would have taken care of the part of the evaluation. Okay. Now let us look um, very closely. So that would be six. Let us look at seven. Seven and uh, speak about inequalities. Uh, you know that the inequalities and equalities, the, 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 the converse, eh? You know the, and these signs, right? What does sign mean? This means greater than. Yes? And this sign, greater than or equal, less than, less than or equal. So this is? Greater than, greater than, or equal Yeah, and this is lesser Greater than, greater than or equal, lesser than or lesser than, equal to. Okay? So let us look at what it says. So we can use equality, inequalities to solve word problems. And let us look at it. You, the argument is that Cheryl bowled 156 and 180 in our first two games. So we have it done consecutively. 156 and 180. What must she bowl in the third game? So you notice what we have? The first game, 156, 180. Then we have for the se uh, for the second, the third game to have an average of 170. Now this is interesting because when we are looking at average, we can find it. Yes, because the new average now becomes it must be less than 170. It must be less than 170. So let us mark what we have. We want to say, let X represent the score In the third game, so we have an equation then. The first game was what? One fifty six. The second game was one eighty. And X, we don't know. True? We don't know. 
But we say it must not, we say it must be at least, yes, 170. Read the, read the equation so that I'll get it right. Let us do it again so that we, we, we get the emphasis. Cheryl Ball, and this is one, it could have been Roy, it could have been Paul. It could have been green. And we're going to look at one green so, so that you, you, you get it right. Sharon Bowl 156, 180. In two games, she bowled the third. We don't know the third, which is X. But we want to have an average at least 170 for the games. So, here we chalk it up. 156, 180X, this. And we can solve. So, what we have, these two when you have them. So, X, and if you take these and add them, what you get? Hmm? 156 and 180. Add it for me. 336. So X Oh, and it's 3 again. Sorry. It's 3. Let me just make sure we get this right. What have I left off? It says it what? Three, how could we? Three. So in this case here, what we need to do is to multiply both sides by three. So it becomes 156 plus 180 plus x not greater than 170 by. So we can now add it. 336 plus x. And that's 510 when you had it. Therefore, x. Therefore, x is 510. Notice this. This is a plus, and you are taking it over the other side, so it becomes a minus. And the difference between them is 174. So our argument, she must bowl. Uh, let us um, reinvent. Uh, in a case like this, this uh, clear cut, we look for the unknown variable. That's what we look for. The unknown variable. Okay? And the unknown variable in this case was X, right? Now I'm saying uh, green. What if the first number was 140? Think, think it through, Green. And I want you to do this, class. The, and the next number was 170. You don't know the, un, uh, the, the unknown. So you would have put 140, 170x, and divide by 3. 
Let us say this was 180 or 160. Then you do the same methodology by cross multiplying, right? Or eliminate the divisor or the numerator. Okay? The, the denominator, sorry. Eliminate the denominator. Okay? So we are clear with that one. And hence, one of the questions in Aaron was framed in a similar, similar manner. Okay? Now let us look at um, absolute value. And then we throw something in the mix. Now, it is imperative when we are talking about absolute value equation, you are speaking about this in terms of the equivalent of K, where you have the positive numbers, right? So in this case here, typical example, in this case, let me just move across so that you can see. In this case, where you have a typical example, and we are looking at Solve, solve the absolute value equation. And here you have the example. And I'm going to call this 8. I'm certain that anybody could have done this. 2x minus 5 equal 9. So what we do, we eliminate here. Eh? You remove the bracket. So you have 2x minus 5 equal 9. Right? That's a solution, right? And therefore, that's 9. Or it can be written or 2x minus 5 equal minus 9. Okay. Let us look at it. From this answer. 2x minus 5 equal 9. What it is saying, the 9 can be shown as a plus 9 or a minus 9. So if you have done it for that um, 2x minus 5 as minus 9, the result would have been different because as you see it here, 2x minus 5 going across it becomes a, a plus 5 from a minus 9 that's uh, a minus four. Do you agree? Yes. So this one I'm giving you two x equal minus four. Yes. But if we had applied it as this form as it is, you would have had two x equal nine plus five, which equal fourteen x equal 14 divided by 2, which equals 7. Now, the absolute form speaks of this 9, it can be a plus or a minus. That's all you need to know. And then you work it if it is a plus as opposed to a minus. So that's why you have the values. So what are the values then? The first one, this one would have been uh, x equal minus 4 over 2 which equal minus 2 so the values you would have had is what? 7 and minus 2 ok and the last one on this one the uh, 9 let us look at 9 and then I want to introduce factor I know you have done factors already but I just want you to make sure you know it and I, I want a central tendency alright let us look at number 9 here you are given um, the proper um, properties 2.2 and let's speak about K 
Now let us look at an example. Psalms Psalms X plus five eight. So solve x plus 5, right, not greater than 8. Any, anything on this one? I know nobody will say, uh, we don't have a problem, so. So let us put it, x plus 5, not greater than 8. X plus 5, not greater than 8. So you are able to find a value, right? What if you are using as a minus? So let us use it if it were a minus, right? So X would have been 30. Yes. 8 minus 5 equal to minus 30. Or, if you take it in the original form, x plus 5 equal 8, it becomes x equal 8 minus 5, which equals 3. So let us look at it. So we are asked to find it in the, um, the inequalities in this absolute sense. So you have x plus 5 less than 8. So all we need to do is to find what? Use the 8 as a minus or a plus. And you would have got a solution. So here we have, in this case here, if it were used as a minus, remember once you take one number from one from the left to the right, the signs are going to change. So where you have a minus eight and minus that, that plus five becomes a minus. So that's why you get a 13. And in the other case, it becomes eight from uh, five and the result was three. Now, I just want you to uh, sort of understand uh, some fundamental point also. I need to show you another part in terms of ratio and then I go to central tendency. So, you could have been asked to share uh, 9,000 Among NXT that's LXC who will have who you can be LX a third uh, let us do half yes A, that's Abigail. Ab Abigail said, listen, I have done less in this thing here. And, and, and you can say, give me about uh, a quarter. And J, you know J, or it could be Matthew. 
uh, quarter. Right? Or it could have read, you could have written it that way, right? Or you could say, in the ratio of, this is 10, right? Or an R8. One could have been 4, 2, 2. You could say that. Yes? Half, half. Okay? In this case here, you want to find the share. So, E, e gets, it's an half. So what would we find? We would have found the, what would have been the LC for this? Four. Yes. So E gets two over four of 9,000. Yes. A gets one over four of 9,000 and J gets one over four of nine thousand. And these are just simple ratio, right? So when you work out this, this person would have got four thousand five hundred dollars. Yes? And this would have got Two, two, five, two, two, five. Right? So you can share, and that's why you call ratio or proportion. Okay? Huh? I just want to say it as simple as that. Also, uh, we have looked at, um, um, I think it will, would have been other questions dealing with the ratio and proportion, right? But I want you to, to draw your attention, still I want to draw your attention to, because from time to time, we get this notion as if um, things are so difficult and we can't uh, do it. But I want to concur with you that if you don't know, when you ask, it will be explained to you, okay? I, I want you to look at, just in brief, because there's a, a particular area that you have looked at. By the way, we, we would have completed all the units, one through four. But I want to emphasize uh, unit five. It speaks to area and perimeter, right? Now, let me just um, emphasize a point here. Area and perimeter. When we're speaking, uh, we agree that the rectangle carries four sides. Yes? So the area of any rectangle, we thought of that already. The area of a square is a length by the width. True? Yes. Right? And if the square, I want you to look at this. This looks like a square. Not drawn. Well, let's see. So if this is 10. This has to be 10, and that has to be 10. Because square carries equal sides, equal angles, okay? Now, so it is the length by the width. That's the area. If you are doing a triangle, Now, uh, let us look at a triangle. The area of a triangle is half base time height. So if we are given 
a triangle. Let us say we are given an isos um, isosceles triangle. Uh, we know from isosceles triangle that it carries two sides. Yes? So let us do it this way. So, one, one. So let us want to find the area. So, What I've done, I've tried to draw the shortest point from a straight line is the perpendicular uh, distance. True? If the shortest distance from a straight line is the perpendicular distance. Okay? And let us say that it. Let us say this sign, AC, is 10 centimeter. And this sign is 16 centimeter. A, B. So, can we find the height? So we say height. So, how would we find the area of the triangle? So, what we are going to do, and I'm going to call this D. That's D. Right? Okay. So AB is 16 centimeter. Remember, it's isosceles triangle. So this would have to be. So AD must be equal to 8. Right? A, B equals 16 uh, centimeter. Right? And A, C equals 10 centimeter. How would we find H? So to find H, we are going to inject Pythagoras theorem. So Pythagoras theorem teaches this. Notice I'm going to write to the ear, but I want to inject the Pythagoras theorem for you to understand and then find it. Okay? So we know by Pythagoras theorem, A square equal A D square plus DC square. We know by Pythagoras theorem that that's it. So let us just substitute, right? So A, which is the longest side, the longest side of the triangle that faces the, the longest side would be the I continues and, the and then this would be um, the adjacent and the H would have been opposite. Clear? So in this case here we are asked to find DC. So let us look at DC. DC square it becomes what? A C square minus what? A D square. Yes. Right? And 
Let us substitute, put in the numbers. AC is 10 squared. AD would be 8 squared. True? So, DC equal the square root of A squared minus 8 squared. It will be yes. A square, which is 10 square, and A square. So you have 10 square give you 100, A square give you 64, you're going to find the square root of it. So, so you want to find the square root of what? The difference between 164 is 36. So the square root of 36 is 6. So we can find the area. What is the area? It's half base time height. So area of triangle So the area of the triangle is half base half base by height. Now what is that? Half base is eight. What is the height? Did we find the height? Height is? Height is? Is? Six centimeter. So it is? Uh, uh, it is half base. So the whole base is? That's eight. So it's half by 16 by 6. So it's 48 centimeters square. Centimeters square. Okay. So what we have done, let me just identify it. To find area of triangle. So what we have looked at, and let me reinforce the point. We have actually looked at finding the the area of a triangle. In this case here, we're given what? We're given an isosceles triangle. What is an isosceles triangle? An isosceles triangle has, and that's, that, that's everybody knows this, three sides. Yes? Sorry. An isosceles triangle has two sides. It's an arrow. An isosceles triangle has two sides equal. And here we are given uh, the triangle. We sketch it A, B, C, and uh, with A, C, 10, um, 10 centimeters square. 10 centimeter rather. And A, B, 16 centimeter. We do not know age. So we know, based on tearing, that the shortest point from a straight line is the perpendicular distance. Okay? So the perpendicular would form right angles from that base, right? 
So we know if it is 16, therefore AD must be equal to half of 16 centimeter. True? And therefore, given that AB equals 16 centimeter, AD equals 8 centimeter, and AC is 10 centimeters, 10 centimeter, we want to find DC. So by the rule, Pythagoras theorem, we know that the square of the hypotenuse equals the square of the adjacent plus the square of the opposite. Right? So what we did, we put the letters and we do the um, calculations based on it. Okay? And here we are able to, to apply, substituting the letter. We know that AC is 10 centimeter. AD is half of it. Sixteen AB is, and we say AD is sixteen, so it's half, right? So we end up having DC is this. So DC is the same thing as the height, which is ten square minus uh, eight square. So to find DC, it has to be the square root of ten which is 10, 10 to the second power. And eight would be eight to the second power. So you get 100 minus 64, and then you have 36, and you find the square root. So having found the height of six centimeter, you could find the area of the triangle. And the area of the triangle is half base time height, okay? I, I need to add this uh, um, in closing this session today. i just like to add central tendency. Central In central tendency, mm. yes, uh, you must have heard about um, central tendency, right? Hello, we spoke about the Mean, mean, talk to me. Mean, mode, and median. So, let us look at a simple example. All of these are measuring average, right? But the concrete one is the most measurable one is the, the mean. So there are different formulas um, for average, right? But we know it's the sum of the fxi over the total number, right? So let us look at some numbers. 9, 10, 15, 18, 20. And 25, 25. So these are the numbers, and we are asked to find the average of these numbers. So we could have found the average of it, yes. So, so the mean equals 9 plus 10 plus 15 plus 18 plus 20 plus 25 plus 25. And then you count the numbers. 
One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. So it's the sum of the numbers over the total numbers, right? So we can get the mean. So we're going to add them. So you have, and you put it in your calculator so that you want to make sure you get it right. So you have 9 plus 10, that's 19, plus 15, plus 18, plus, and you can add these, and that's 75. And it's 127 over 7. You can test it again. 19 plus 15. Uh, that's 34 plus 18. That's um, 52. 52 and 75. 127. So your answer is 127 divided by 7. And it is 18.14 to two decimal place. It's two. two decimal place places. So that's your mean. What would be your mode? And the mode is the, the mode is the most frequent one. Yes? The mode is the most frequent. So the mode for this one is 25. What's the median? So the median You're going to add them. Look at the median. Look at the formula for the median. You have, remember, you always arrange the numbers in ascending order. Or descending. It doesn't. In this case, I'm arranging it in ascending order. Right? So the median, you're going to look at it, you're going to count them, and you get the middle term. So you have one, two, three. So you look for the middle one. One, two, three, four. So the median is 18. That's the middle, middle term. Okay? You might ask the question, sir, what if you have six numbers? What if you, if you never had that 25? Then what you would have done, you would have the two middle, it would have been, um, say, uh, the, if it were six, you would have had one, two, it would be 18 and 15 divided by two. Okay? So that's it for class. Just let me recap what we have done today. Uh, we actually looked through uh, some of the difficulties you might have experienced and to look at it in a nutshell we went through unit uh, the various units we went through unit uh, two three and four with particular emphasis in three and four and let me highlight so that you can know for unit four you actually look at ratio, proportion. We look at percentage and decimal. We look at percentage um, problem. We look at formulas. You look at problem solving. Then we looked at unit uh, uh, six, at unit seven rather. We look at the question of mean, median, mode. We look at 
uh, five, unit five, the question of areas, perimeter, rectangle, triangles. And I was able to have looked at a question of which we use a scenario of a triangle um, A, B, C, with A, C as 10 a centimeter, A, B as 16 centimeters, and we do not know A, D, nor C, D, but what we are certain is that having a triangle, what sort of triangle? Is it an isosceles triangle? Yes, you have an isosceles triangle which two sides are equal. And we say for 16, we know that, and we know theorem, the shortest distance from a straight line is the perpendicular distance we know that's given so in this case that we have where we have 10 ac square we know the rule would have to be we would apply the pythagoras theorem which teaches us that the sum of the Longest side, which is the hypothesis, equal the sum of the opposites and the sum of the adjacent. In this case here, all we need to do is to mop it. Here we substitute let to a numbers, for instance, AC square equal AD square plus DC square. We knew that to find D C square, we use or we evaluate things. The same thing as changing a subject or formula. So we say C square equal AC square minus AD square. And here we have 10 square minus, minus what? 8 square. So we have 100 minus 64. And therefore, we are able to establish the height, which is the square root of 36 equals 6. And then we are able to find the area of the triangle by saying the area of the triangle equals half base time height. And that is what we have done to find half of 16 by 6 and 48. And notice very interestingly that we spend time going through it, the calculations. Also, we have actually looked at the conversion of decimal to percentage, vice versa, decimal percentage fraction. We say if you have a fraction to convert to a decimal, all you need to do is to take, is to do to, to do a simple division, which put in the biggest number as the divisor and the smallest one in. And for example, if you are using a half, if you are using 7 over 8, we could have done that also. 7 over 8, you would have said 8 into 7, which is point, I can't, add or not, 8 into 70, you would have said 8 into 70, 8, 8, that's 64. So it would be 7, uh, it would be 8 on top, and then you would have carried another knot. So when you work it out, it would become 0.875. So here, so uh, 7, 8, we have looked at, right? 7, 8 is the same thing as 87.5%. Okay. So that should be it in a nutshell. So class is finished.
until we meet. May God bless you and keep you. Hi, Daddy. Student, thank you. Can we stop the recording? No. Oh, so I've got edited.